Especially all our friends from the US and Canada have been looking out for this very version of the all-new BMW 3 Series because the M340i is most sold in the US and Canada. Well, what about this six-cylinder petrol engine and all of the exterior and interior features of the M340i here on Autogofuel? As you know, full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. That's 100 already, wow. Please subscribe to us if you haven't done so far. Here the all-new BMW 3 Series is a little bit wider than the previous generation and here this M340i has special cerium gray, that's how they call it, color here around the double kidney and also this mesh style grill. So yeah, that looks really sporty, also a sportier lower bumper and the headlamps, they come standard as LED Optional, you can get adaptive LEDs and optional, optional, the laser light, which you can also see here as we have those blue accentuations and a modern daytime running light. Overall, quite sporty already in the front and the color here for today is Tanzanite blue. So it's a very dark one, but with special brighter nuances depending on how you look and how the light comes. Very beautiful. I rather like screaming out Thomas blue colors, but this one also pretty elegant, isn't it? So I recently heard there was a drinking game when you watch Auto Food with Friends if I walk in from the front actually like this or if I come in from the rear, so from which side. So if you're <laughs> watching Auto Food as a group, yeah, that's a cool drinking game, you know, whatever you want to drink. So, but now clearly with the side profile, let's begin with the length of 4.70m, 4 meters, 70, 15 foot 4 or 185 inches. And that's actually 8.5 centimeters longer than the 3 Series predecessor. Here, of course, the M340i. It's no different. Classic sedan shape. And I can also announce to you that the M340i will also be available as the Touring. That will then be most important for Germany and the UK. This one here is sedan, predominantly then, for example, told you earlier, for the US and Canada, and also pretty famous in Australia, for example. South Africa as well. Then, cerium gray accentuations here also at the side mirrors. Very beautiful M logo, because this one is the M performance model. You remember, the M performance model are, so to say, the M light variants, and the true emeralds then, you know, with even more power. Then, 18-inch wheels would be standard for the M340i. It's always coming. M340i, yeah. <laughs> but I'm doing my best. Yeah, doing my best here, really. Then 19-inch wheels. Those ones are the ones you can see here. That is even an option for this model here. But you always get bigger brake discs to have a little bit more performance here, also with the blue accentuations. Very beautiful. Then again, you can see how the designers played a little bit with light and shadow. Here, brighter color then from this Tanzanite blue on the top part, then the dropping line, then it's darker again a little bit. And you have those glossy black frames around the windows to have this sportier or this more aggressive look. So do you like this model here or would you prefer another 3 Series? Also in the rear, the M340i for us rather elegant, sporty style. So not too much attention to everything. In general, the new 3 Series has those horizontally drawn tail lamps. So where you see this new generation, oh yeah, that's the new 3 Series. It's mainly the tail lamps if you compare it to the predecessor. Then the M340i gets this additional small lip there in the vehicle color and the cerium gray accentuations in the lower part. Then those beauty tips here on the outside, the real exhaust on the inside, two pipes. And interesting is that they split very early in the whole exhaust system to make it more efficient and also, you know, to increase the performance. Yeah, what do you think about the first sound taste you heard there in the intro which Jonas has done? 
also very interesting definitely here. And X-Drive logo because clearly this is not rear wheel drive, this is all wheel drive but with a rear wheel bias. For the new 3 Series you can get 2 liter 4 cylinders and 3 liter 6 cylinders, both petrol and diesel. There's also the new 2 liter petrol based PHEV, but this one here, a true 6 cylinder petrol engine, 3 liter of displacement. And here with 374 horsepower in the M Performance model 340i, M340i. Acceleration figure is 4.4 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles now as sedan or 4.5 then as touring because the touring is just a little bit heavier but you know you won't feel big of a difference. X drive so the all-wheel drive with rear wheel bias so you should still get you know quite sporty out of the corners we'll see how that one plays out in our driving part really looking forward to that key slim and light and the M colors here at the side but of course also keyless entry available when you put your finger just here on those you could call them also vortex generators <laughs> those three lines well not really but they looked like it and then put your hand on the inside to open it door closing sound yeah that sounds quite solid like that then inside of the doors also soft and plush materials here on the top Hofmeister King design element also at the inside of the doors all buttons galvanized so high quality also place for some reasonable bottles right there optional Harman Kardon sound system so that gives you nice sound M340i entry batch and also sporty aluminum pedals together with the M Sport steering wheel which can also be heated yay nice function for the winter time BMW live cockpit means they also come with the all digitalized stuff left and right soon more deals to that and seats, those ones here are the optional animal skin seats, but as a base M340i, you would get a nice mix of sustainable sensor tech leather red and on the inside some Alcantara. I would also go for those ones if you have it available in Germany and most European markets, they are available. Stick with those that you get that as base. And the equipment might depend from market to market, market which you can actually get. But in all cases, you will get already sportier seats than with the base 3 series versions however they are not necessarily less comfortable the seating form is sporty yes they hold a little bit tighter but they still offer decent comfort also for taller people i'm more means 86 or six foot one yeah if you have subscribed you know that if not you know it right now <laughs> no. and there's still plenty of headroom left there are also panoramic roofs available for the 3 series this one here without one. So nowadays a lot of manufacturers equip the test vehicles without one because then you can show like what's the maximum headroom and so on. Um, yeah, depends on. But a lot of people like the panoramic roofs and when we have the possibility to show them, we always do. Then steering wheel, manual control, but you know, pretty easy and cool function and very well adjustable. The steering wheel also with the pedals right there to be able to shift because this one is only available with the automatic uh, gearbox, eight speed converter automatic gearbox. But since you can do the manual shifts right there, you can still drive it in a very sporty way. Left side of the steering wheel, set the cruise control. And yeah, those are not those cheap rubber um, buttons here anymore. This is now hard plastic, but it feels actually better than the, than the soft rubber stuff. You can set the distance in here, optional ACC, the adaptive cruise control. Also with this highway pilot, pilot mode, depending on the market, you know, it works more or less. It just depends on the regulations. A car can do more than some of the regulations allow in some markets. And on the right side, you can use the voice command. If you don't say hello BMW, just click this button or pick up the phone and so on or adjust the volume. And about the steering wheel, let's check out more about this whole cockpit. This is the interior overview. Most of the stuff is just special to the new 3 Series and not exactly for the M340i. Of course, a little bit more stuff you have already included, like the BMW Live cockpit. So left side, 12.3 inch digital instruments, 
zoom more details to that. Right side 10.25 inch screen right there, horizontal style, and everything's really crystal clear to read. Pretty amazing. Soft touch at the top, top of the dashboard. Optional head display, also zoom, me, zoom more details to that. Again, this M Sport steering wheel with a nice grip. And also a lot of controls we also told you earlier. Then on the right side, we also have this separate climate unit still. What I don't like is that you don't have the AC button to put it on and off. So you can only put it off completely like this and change the temperature. But then for the AC, you have to go for the AC menu and then go here in the screen for AC on and off. So that's a little bit annoying to me. Zoom more leads to that screen. First of all, the rest of the interior here, metal knurled knob for the volume still, but you can also control at the steering wheel. Then this aluminum mesh this is pretty cool because then you don't have so much high glossy black elements in the interior. Slides open, then you have an inductive charging pad for your phone if you like. USB A charger and and then the adaptive cup holders, 12 volt power supply, then this sporty shifting lever for the automatic gearbox. Then you have the camera button, separate one, start stop engine, driving modes. We'll test those ones when we drive the car. And of course, this classic metal knurled turning and pressing knob for the infotainment system with some hotkeys. And you can also write some addresses on here if you don't want to use the voice input. And then this armrest, you can put it up and it's really very well, well attached and USB-C underneath with some storage. Infotainment system up close, that's the main menu. You can also go to the GPS and it looks like this and this is pretty responsive and I really like the software they are using also clear to read and also guides us always in the right direction. And again the hotkey to go back to the map or the main menu in the lower middle console that's always possible phone either via bluetooth or wireless apple carplay sometimes it takes a while to connect it but then it's there and you can very well use it here see the integrations also all the way all over then this optional sound system does actually a very decent job and it's a good surround sound wow crystal clear very crisp very nice wow oh, i just want to listen to some music now <laughs> Okay, we'll just continue to review for a second. So go back to the Carpet menu and here go back to the BMW menu. And of course, voice command is interesting. They at the moment put it to Hello BMW. Drive me to Berlin. Okay, I've selected Berlin. Is this our new destination or shall I have it as intermediate destination? So then you can use this one as a for the guidance we can also just um, press the um, the voice button at the steering wheel you don't always have to say hello BMW you can also change the temperature while driving but of course to me it's easier just to use the buttons but those are just some um, examples what you can do then with the voice activation and um, you know it's also possible if you don't use that one you can also just type in the address manually or you can use this writing pad then here to go for some <laughs> drawings or you can of course type in the letters for the address so that's you know um used you can just pick what you like best and what's also interesting is when we go to the car menu um we have for example here for, for driving information oh, there's also a blue car then here that's cool that they pay attention to those you have sport displays that you can check the g-forces while driving for example and what's also very interesting what i always wanted to try is when you go to car and settings and then you can go to the general settings general settings and then you have the activation word but also a personal activation word you can set start recording please tell me the name of the activation word that you want to use to start the voice input in future hey mercedes super i've saved my personal activation word <laughs> So, so let, let's try that. <laughs> oh, hey, Mercedes. <laughs> okay, yeah, I had to do it at once. So, see, even that works, but you can also just um, name your car, maybe or the name of your wife, or whatever, or your husband. So, 
you're free to go with whatever and then you can maybe even form a better relationship with your car. And as long as they have that feature, I want to show it. Yeah, those BMW wings. I love this style at the headlamps. Now for puddle light, it's still available from the outside um, when the car has that. And of course here on the inside, on the wow, this is just so cool to look at. Instruments, those digital ones like this, pretty clear to read and also easy as for the orientation. In the middle, there's then space for the GPS info, for example. You can also get those in there. And there's also a reason why the RPMs go counterclockwise. And if Jonas wants, he can also rev it up a little bit. Whoa, yeah, way to go, Jonas. Head up display is a good option. You can see the speed, the allowed speed. It's not flickering in real life. It's very crisp also when you just look at it with your own eye. And also some GPS directions, even some intersections if you're close to the next intersection. So always good to have that. And when you put in reverse gear, there we have it. The rear camera with those helping lines and a great resolution. And the, the thing we talked about earlier with the cameras on the outside, the fake drone view from above, which is then combined for the rear view camera, front view, and also the side mirror cameras. When you put in D mode, then you have a front camera here, reverse mode, rear camera again. There again, you can see. <laughs> it always looks funny when the car passes by. There you can see now how they really set together this picture. Pretty interesting. And the reversing assistant, we've shown that to you in the 8 series review and also in the 7 series review from the facelift. This is very interesting when you go in somewhere, like a very narrow surrounding, and then you can go with this reversing assistant and the car automatically drives back itself because it might be tricky to go back yourself in a very narrow way. It's also an interesting feature. In the rear, it's always very interesting how they cut out the glass right here and they also protect it here with a rubber lip. Then right there, also soft touch at the inside of the doors in the rear. Yeah, I mean, it's an expensive car, then we can also expect that. Blue contour stitches right there, but also at the seats. Yeah, Jonas also always want to move onto the seats, but you know, here we go. <laughs> so also those blue contour stitches. And do you see this typical three series bench form? So how everything is like rounded in the lower area and the bench goes all the way through. If I remember the E30 of my grandparents, it's the same style. So yeah, some retro form of the rear bench. It's always to me an interesting finding. And what about the space we have here? Well, in the predecessor 3 Series, I could hardly sit here. Now the car is a little bit longer, so I can sit here also as a tall adult. Yeah, maybe I could drive with the seat a little bit more upright like this. That it would be a little bit more realistic. It fits, but we have to think about it's not the best package overall. So considering, you know, this mid-size segment here, and it's almost the same with the other competitors, the length is already, you know, considerably. But the space you have on the inside is a little bit disappointing. Again, it works for four tall adults, but it's also not plenty of space. Headroom, you can also put a hand over my head. That's no problem. So you can also live with that. And it's actually quite cozy in here. Again, not the most comfortable one in the rear here, but you can surely live with four tall adults, as I said. Yay! <laughs> the seat belts also with the M colors. That's a nice detail. Then you have Isofix at the outside of the seats each. You have some cup holders right there. Also adaptive. And you can also use this one here as a ski hatch, the middle part. The rest then will be flipped from the trunk. N well, this is all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive. In both cases, there's a massive middle tunnel. That's typical for BMW. So, yeah, to be able to sit here, you can you can do it. Um, it's pretty hard then in the middle part. Yeah, you can sit in the middle, but maybe not the most comfortable part. And now I have to step over to this middle tunnel. Good that my shoes are all clean. So, and now two more USB-C supplies here in the rear if you like and an additional ac unit if the car would, yeah we well, can already see it right here trunk space is at 480 liters but of course if you want to go more flexible then you can take the touring so the estate version well not in the us and canada that said so yeah stick you know you just stick with this one here of course limited as for loading in here but then they have increased the trunk space if you compare it to the predecessor version and then the length right here the normal length is about a meter and the width as well 
so a little bit less than a meter and the height here maximum height is just about 50 centimeters so that's actually easy to remember and then we can flip the seats to release them right there have to go around ski hatch also possible as i told you earlier other than that like this two third one third split like that and then you can also load through longer things and if we go all the way up to the seat as i would be driving let's see what do we have here and that's about one meters and 80 and just that you have a practical image when i put a backpack in here it also fits in upright like this So there's a sporty version of this vehicle, why not putting it in sports mode and see how the all-wheel drive is rear-wheel biased or not. Hmm, interesting. So yeah, I felt there's a little bit more power at the rear wheels, but definitely when accelerating out you feel this all-wheel drive character because with rear-wheel drive only the car would have come around with the rear a little bit more. But here I also felt that the front wheels were also pulling me and this is faster, this is better as for the performance, but a little bit less of this rear wheel BMW feel, which is more the, the, the purest BMW feeling. So this one here more on a logical performance side, if you, you know, if you know what I mean. And this, for example, also feels better when accelerating straight out because again, there's more performance. And here, for example, from 40 kilometers to 100. That's it already. That was one on the 10 mark. So, wow, really great in acceleration. And, and of course, if I really hammer it, there's even more torque at the front wheels. And this is really giving you a great boost. And also, you know, this is quite harmonious feeling because we have this distribution on the wheels steering feel mm, so that was something i have been talking about with the three series quite quite some time so here in the low degree you know areas a little bit loose to me and then it increases and gets better in the outside parts so i would like to have a little bit more feeling here you know in the low degree areas and then i would be really happy but overall the steering feel is very sporty and you can a nice slalom the weight balance is about 50 50 weight equal weight distribution a little bit lower center of gravity here with the new generation they also achieve that of course in general most of the three series they drive somewhat the same here in the m340i the standard would be a 10 millimeter lower sport suspension a fixed sport suspension optional and also equipped in this test vehicle is the adaptive amp suspension that means when i'm here in a sports mode it's a little bit stiffer more contact and reaction from the car and if i go to the comfort mode for example then it's more comfortable so it's indeed <laughs> adaptive as i said and this is also a good choice the fixed amp suspension um, is it's now a little bit rough for everyday driving unless you really desire that so the adaptive amp suspension which is an option even for the m340i is actually a good choice so i would also you know definitely go for that one so one of the options i would even tick with this very vehicle and for the launch control we put it in sports mode put it in the, into the d of course then manual shifting mode and then also the additional traction mode and please don't do this at home kits so we just wait until there's no car no traffic whatsoever and then we'll accelerate it out just a little bit for you because that's good to see here with the all-wheel drive brakes all forward left and that's 100 already wow wow that was cool and safe and collected because of that all-wheel drive and i mean at the side there there was even you know like some small cobblestones and so on so there was a loose ground 
and still you know how well this car accelerated and how stable it was by doing that that was really amazing so wow pretty impressed I mean we had cars that had even harsher performance and so on but again this how how, how they could keep this performance in a safe way you know that is I think the really interesting thing about this car and then if you think about yeah due to this all-wheel drive it's not the super purest BMW experience but then again for most of the customers this one will be better and safer you know when they have great performance but yet in a let's say controlled way most of the times you know you won't go to this traction mode leave all the EC in place so if you are on the street just a normal um, road then you leave all those um, helpers active that's the best thing you can do and yeah overall I mean you can have a lot of fun with this car definitely and here cruising on the countryside roads is also something you know you can enjoy very well also in the comfort mode it's still sporty enough even in the comfort mode again if you have very well even and you know well done roads then the sports mode increases the connection to the road a little bit more even other than that most of the time I probably will leave it in the comfort mode and you always have the you know, performance when you want to have it and you can also use the shifting pedals right here even if you're just, just in a normal driving mode just use those ones shift back and then you have a better acceleration out there you already heard that and here again when you want to cruise through the next neighborhood the exhaust is not too loud from the outside if you're in a normal comfort mode you probably also heard in the sound test where we switched from the normal comfort mode then to the sports mode where even in you know just you know when you're in the, in the, in the uh, idle mode that even made a difference right there and here for example I don't need to change the driving mode safety pedal and there we are back with the acceleration again and that's a lot of fun and so this car can again have to <laughs> stress it again can combine really both worlds that's probably pretty cool and so from all the three series versions I have been driving yeah this one is definitely among the most fun it is probably the most sporty fun in a performance way then again with the rear wheel bias as we had for example with the PF that is definitely very cool if you just have a rear wheel drive so there's always a temptation if you get a 3 series to get one with rear wheel drive only definitely still and the PF of course has this you know um, this electric something which makes it more interesting so if I could choose yeah probably at the moment between those two either this one or the PF this one here of course are also very very expensive so that might be something um, and of course depends on your charging infrastructure so if you have a charging infrastructure available at the moment I probably would go for the 3 series PF if not this one here definitely a fun choice again if it's okay with the money <laughs> the most basic function like the good new handling and the good noise installation you will also have with the base um, 3 series so I'm always a friend also not to buy the cars super super high and top spec the base function of the car you can also enjoy when you go a lower spec and then also get a more decent price but definitely has also been a fun round with this one here today but we still have some more driving situations here for you to come and to some cruising features everyday driving life for example the motorway we have a blind spot monitor which is a very important option there we go with the yellow triangle right there when the car is about to overtake you then we also have the adaptive cruise control even with this highway pilot which is activated at the moment it keeps you in the lane you're supposed to keep your hands on the steering wheel at all times this is just for demonstration purpose the re re car really keeps me straight this is well done so if I this here it automatically corrects so that's a quite cozy function and it works you know very smoothly and it also doesn't have too many moments where it has low, like those false positives yeah if something goes st very straight for a very very long time then maybe but overall pretty happy with this system overall and 
it's the autonomous emergency brake that is of course then standard equipment for a car like this and also here at 120 kilometers an hour or about 70 miles per hour it's actually pretty silent in here so very cozy there's also something they have improved here with this new 3 series generation and this engine here if you keep it steady like this this is also a good example what what would be the minimum consumption and they can score some seven liters or more kilometers which would be 34 mpg us 41 mpg uk of course if you hammer it out a little bit more then rather goes like nine liters more kilometers and then lower um mpg figures then of course um yeah then something below 30 and of course below 40 and as for the uk figures so it really depends on on you on, on your throttle definitely but feeling very comfortable here on the motorway even at lower speeds and then also the engine is quite silent and in the comfort mode also the suspension is doing a great job so that's the good thing about this adaptive suspension it can actually do both comfort and sportiness depending on what you like and if you have this one here in comfort mode then and you're just cruising it doesn't feel that you would have the attacking 3 series the attacking m340i this m performance model which we then you know had earlier with the acceleration and the handling and so on and that's also what this model is for that it actually is able to do both and you don't have like let's say a bad compromise or so so and that's also what, what i actually like about this vehicle that you still have this sporty elegance and still have the comfort especially here with the adaptive suspension and of course those upgrades here for example as for the noise insulation and so on and also to me maybe a little bit more comfortable than before overall than the predecessor generation So what's really cool this six cylinder on the one hand brings a lot of calmness tranquility if you just you know leave it as it is so really a sovereign experience as i like and then sports mode yeah it gets a little bit bumpier then and then high corner speeds are possible here with 90 no problem in the car feels you know so easy to control and very precise look at that hard on the brakes here then accelerate out again, rear wheel bias, good sound. That was not even all the way through with the throttle, so that feels really cool. So the car feels very calm and collected, yet you have a great performance. So I would say what they offer here, wow, that was tires, they hook up great. So what they offer here is a safe performance, as I would call it, you know, it's very powerful, but it's not exaggerated and the car is very well to control very neutral and balanced in the handling now onto the motorway again behind the truck and so I of course you know overtake that one now I can and that's already it wow lane change pretty stable again and the higher speeds so even if I you know do some steering here the higher speeds very stable the whole car so I really like that you know so um, it's not an uncontrolled beast it's very powerful but you know you know what you get you feel that you have this you know, you have a lot of trust in the vehicle and that's also something where this all-wheel drive of course also helps helps to build more trust so also different conditions this car will be very well to control And now to our conclusion for today with the BMW 3 Series as M340i. Yeah, finally we could do this one here as a full review, also on the road. One of the earliest parts we did with the 3 Series was driving this one here as a prototype on the racetrack, so you should also tune into that review. And also to all the other 3 Series videos we've done, if you, you know, searching for a particular version, or maybe you were just searching for this one, then you were right here. So overall, I think the exterior, yeah, very nice. Probably the nicest ones we've seen today because uh, yeah, this mesh grill is something very special and it looks a little bit sportier than the other versions. Uh, just, you know, not over the top. So still this sporty, elegant look. That's also what I like. What about you? 
Interior also really refined if you compare it to the predecessor. They have really stepped up the game in the interior build quality. Also, as standard, you can get those nice Alcantara fabric seats, at least in Europe. Sensatec alternatives are also available in the US and Canada. So overall, also good choices they have here. Head-up display, we can also really see it from the outside. So a lot of elaborate functions you already have here. You don't have to go a segment above to the 5 Series. Already the 3 Series is offering everything you might need. That's today even with the 1 Series with the all-new model that you get all the infotainment features and so on. Driving-wise, of course, that was the most important part for today. Yeah, it's not a rear-wheel drive only model. The X-Drive to get this power to the ground. This is actually on the one hand sportier because you have a better acceleration and so on and you're also safer in let's say wet conditions. On the other hand, a 3 Series is more purest when it has just a rear-wheel drive. And I felt that for example when driving the PHEV model, which was really fun to drive because it was rear-wheel drive only. And, you know, that's also speaking for a different horsepower variant where you just have the rear-wheel drive. However, still a rear-wheel bias that you still have a sporty feeling here in this car. So if you want, let's say, most performance, but the true M model, which will come at the later stage, is maybe a little bit, you know, too much for you. And this one here even performed as a prototype on the racetrack and was super much fun to ride. In general, in this mid-size segment, the new 3 Series is one of the most fun to drive. That's also why people still go for it. I would also prefer to the big diesel because that is, you know, just a little bit more fun to drive. And the big diesel was also not that, you know, that good in the, in the fuel economy as I would have hoped. So, yeah, this one is still a hot pick, especially in the US and in Canada. The only thing is that, especially at this one, yeah, the price gets really high. Base price here in Germany, 60k. Then if you pick some more extras, the car here today, 80k. Wow, so 80,000 euros here. And that's a tough pill to swallow, definitely, even though it was a lot of fun to go for this one. Which 3 Series model would I actually go for? So far, I really have to say that I found the PF very, very interesting. So that would, at the moment, still be my hot pick. Although, you know, with the color and with the design, and the power. This was, of course, also a very nice ride here today. What do you think? Tell me your favorite the new 3 Series model and also browse our other videos here. As we link them in the video description and also in the pinned comment. And I hope you stay subscribed or subscribe if you haven't done so far. Join us here with our community with a very positive but also sometimes critical attitude when it comes to certain features about the cars. But the good thing is, you know, there's no BS here on our channel, not in the comments. We are a very good community and I hope you have joined us already. And if not, join us and see you next time.